in the book of Matthew, ESV, beginning in chapter 7. Judge not, that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? But do not notice the log that is in your own eye. Well, how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye. And then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and the one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? There's a cadence there. <laughs> I didn't notice. Um, sorry. So whatever you wish, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but are inwardly ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. Bears. Maybe another way to say that is produces. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. <clears throat> not by what people say, not by those who don't know the tree very well spend time around the tree not those who hear about the tree but those who actually see the tree witness it produce fruit and say oh that fruit is good or that fruit is bad not hearsay not chatter not idle talk anyway sorry for the sidebar it's a very common thing in all the world Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. On that day, 
many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. <laughs> Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house. Just pummeled it. Sorry, that was me adding, sorry. <laughs> but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now, hmm. a rock is Christ. The sand is other things that aren't Christ. The house is us. The foundation is Christ or anything that isn't Christ, sand. When Jesus finished these sayings, <clears throat> the crowds were astonished at his teaching. I know my jaw would be hitting the ground, does already sometimes, but in person, you bet. I think I would fall down dead right there. Death by holiness. I'm probably exaggerating, but that's how I would feel. For he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. Hmm. When he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for proof of them, to them. When he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him. Lord, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I, too, am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled. Hmm. He said to those that followed him, Truly, I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. 
while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she rose and began to serve him. That evening, they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons. And he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. I believe this would be the Sea of Galilee, the Lake of Tiberias, Sea of Tiberias, a giant lake. Sea in the ancient context just meant a great body of water. And the scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. <clears throat> I guess just a little sidebar there as far as the dead burying their own dead. At that time in history in Israel, a body would be placed in a tomb and left there for a year would be so that it would fully and completely decompose and then it would be reopened the tomb would be reopened and the bones would be placed in an ossuary which is a bone box and that was so as to preserve space within the tomb for more family it was economical uh, you didn't just go into a box and then get sunk into the ground in those days. Anyway, that was, uh, I mean, some people did, but, or at least they got buried. I don't think they got put into a box. Kind of silly going into a box, if you ask me. It's kind of a pattern of this world thing, in my opinion. But hey, free market. And when, G and when he got into the boat, verse 23, chapter 8, And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? And when he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes. Two demon-possessed men met him, coming out of the tombs so fierce that no one could pass that way. And behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? 
Now a herd of many pigs was feeding at some distance from them. And the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs. And behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. The herdsmen fled, and going into the city they told everything, especially what happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region, as is the case nowadays. Nothing new under the sun. Anyway, chapter 9. And getting into the boat, he crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic, lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. Behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid. And they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch tears away from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wine skins. If it is, the skins burst and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wine skins, and so both are preserved. While he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and I know she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, If only... If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. 
Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and he saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose, and the report of this went through all the district. And as Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him, crying aloud, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said to him, To them, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly warned them, See that no one knows about it. But they went away and spread his fame through all the district. As they were going away, behold, a demon-oppressed man, who was mute, was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the mute man spoke, and the crowd marveled, saying, Never was anything like this seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casts out demons by the prince of demons. And Jesus went through, all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, The harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly for the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are this. First, Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Zebedee, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphys, and Thaddeus, Simon the, Je the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying. Give without pay. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts. No bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or staff. For the laborer deserves his food. For the laborer deserves his food. Whatever town or village you enter, 
find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come on it. But if the house is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles when they deliver you over. Do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the Father, his child, and children. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be heard by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor is a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden, that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim it on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. Therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge before my father, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his own cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Just an interruption here. Um, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. This is not about um, 
emotional feeling, right? And while those feelings may or may not line up with the things we do, or don't do, or wish to do, or hope to do, right? And some other possibilities there. The feeling itself is not what he's talking about, the feeling of love. He's talking about the actions that we do. I may feel miserable and unloving and emotionally, but I may actually be loving someone if my motivation is pure and to please God. Otherwise, I'm not loving them really. So, we love him more. We keep the priority. He's at the top. And we're not above others. We are equal or below them, depending on the context and the application. But we do not lord it over them. There may be a hierarchy as far as a station and a position for the application of life. But that hierarchy is not. It is a leadership to do one thing. It is not a leadership to lord over the lives completely of the other. Anyway, just a sidebar there so people understand. It's not a sin to love your parents, to love your children, even with strong emotion. He's talking about the priority and the things we do, the tangible aspects of love, the tangible to the other. Maybe hard for us to do, maybe not. Okay, back to the reading. Chapter 10, verse 40. Whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person, because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. Whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. When Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Little sidebar again. There was tradition at that point in history that there would be two messiahs, or possibly two messiahs. And there's much more to that that I'm going to go into now, but John wasn't doubting the one he had baptized. He's not contradicting his earlier statements. He was just wondering, is, is this the one, or is there another one? Like, Anyway, just a thought. I'm no expert on it, but there's a thought about that to look into and do research. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out to see, into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing 
or in kings' houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplace, calling to their playmates. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. And we sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. <laughs> for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds, or wisdom is known by her children. Then he began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Corazon, Woe to you, Bethsaida. Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre, Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be far more bearable on that day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works had been done, in you had been done, in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. At that moment, at that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. His Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find the rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light.